Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition top stories. The ECCB says the COVID-19 pandemic must be approached with a mindset of growth. A committee has been appointed with a view of recommencing commercial activity and the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports recognizes the youth despite the odds. Hello and thank you for joining us at the Information Command Center for the national response to COVID-19 as we bring you the latest developments. The Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, in his recent address, indicated that opportunity lurks amidst the doom and gloom brought on by the COVID-19 pandemic. He noted that the ECCB has been working assiduously to assist members of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU, with an holistic response to the pandemic. Details in this report. Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, Timothy Antoine, in his recent address indicated that the COVID-19 pandemic has caused a global economic downturn and an almost certain recession, something that he describes as the perfect storm. Governor Antoine noted that like many other crises before, the COVID-19 pandemic will soon be in the world's rearview mirror, but the scars and lessons will linger forever. The pandemic, according to the governor, has presented opportunities to enhance the way we live, work and conduct our daily lives, opportunities that can be seized if approached with a growth mindset. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, is projecting that the global economy will contract in 2020 on a magnitude same as or larger than the global financial crisis. The extent of the economic impact depends on the length and the severity of the pandemic, and those are still unknowns at this time. Governor Antoine indicated that the ECCB has run several scenarios for the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, ECCU. Based on two such scenarios, economic activity in the ECCU is projected to contract between 5% and 7% in 2020, accompanied by a sharp rise in unemployment. Now keep in mind that prior to this pandemic, economic growth in the ECCU was projected at 3.3%. Member governments have fashioned and announced fiscal stimulus or what may be more aptly described as care and relief packages to help cushion the effect of the pandemic on individuals and businesses. This is an exceptionally challenging time for our governments because revenues have plummeted. Since the outbreak, the ECCB has been focused on two priorities, protecting its staff and serving the region. The governor highlighted some of the actions undertaken by the ECCB to date. First, provided financial support to member governments through a $4 million grant, $500,000 for each member country, from the Fiscal Reserve Tranche 2. Second, reach an agreement with the ECCU Bankers Association on a loan deferral program for customers for up to six months. A waiver of late fees and charges is applicable to eligible customers during that period. Third, created a page on the ECCB's website to provide information on the bank's COVID-19 response. Fourth, discuss a loan deferral program for customers with credit unions, the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Unions, and national regulators. Fifth, increase government share of the credit allocation budget, thereby increasing the central bank's lending capacity to member governments. Sixth, instituted bank-wide telecommuting, working from home. And seventh, reduce the discount rate to 2% from 6.5%. This is the rate at which the central bank lends to governments and banks. The ECCB has also been conducting regular meetings with ministries of finance within the ECCU with a view of lending support to the development of national and regional responses to COVID-19. The ECCB is working closely with the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS Commission, in the procurement of critical supplies, assessments, resource mobilization and coordination. The ECCB has also engaged the IMF and World Bank Group on getting assistance from members of the ECCU. 
Like many other events and celebrations, activities scheduled as part of the celebration of St. Lucia's Youth, such as the highly anticipated Youth Awards, have been halted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Observed annually, this year's Youth Month is being celebrated under the theme Pouvoir Jeunesse, the Power of the Youth. Youth Day is observed annually on April 14 during the observance of Youth Month. Despite the odds, Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Honorable Edmund Estefan, seized the opportunity to convey a message of hope and resilience to the nation's youth. The minister recognized the contributions being made by the youth, from those who volunteer to those who contribute to the various sectors, including the agriculture sector and the green and orange sectors. He said their contributions did not go unnoticed as they are integral to the success of St. Lucia. Honorable Estefan highlighted some new initiatives being embarked upon by the Ministry. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is working on a virtual youth development platform with the aim of helping young people engage in discussion during this time of limited social interaction with their peers. We are also considering the provision of psychosocial support to, to the youth as this pandemic has suddenly taken a toll on their emotional and mental health. The Ministry is also in discussion with the international and regional organizations on methods to bring relief to young people, and that will be communicated when things are in place. We are also in discussion with young people in trying to develop an esports program in St. Lucia. Minister Honorable Estefan called on the youth to join in the fight against COVID-19 as part of the mitigation efforts to reduce the transmission of the virus. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be contributing 35,000 disposable masks to young people across the island. This gesture signals the recognition of April as Youth Month as all celebration activities and events that would have attracted public gatherings have been cancelled. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be assisting in the fight to reduce the spread of the coronavirus, the COVID-19, by distributing reusable face masks to young people across the island. We want young people to model the behavior of wearing these face masks to signal their commitment to halt the transmission of COVID-19. If you will be living in your home, please wear a face mask. Youth workers will sensitize the communities at the appropriate time of distribution. Minister for Youth Development and Sports, Honorable Edmund Estefan, added that the disposable masks will be distributed across the island and will target young people in essential services, including other places of employment as well as voluntary organizations using the services of young people. This is NTN Nightly. Please stay with the broadcast. We'll be right back. Coronavirus? I am worried, Gasa. It's only old people dying from that. Hold up. Being young does not mean being safe. Yes, it's true that the elderly are at higher risk, but anyone can get the virus. The effect is even worse if you have a chronic condition like hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, or weakness in your immune system. If you are living with these conditions, be extra careful. Wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Avoid touching your face. Take steps to boost your immunity through proper nutrition, exercise, rest, and take your medication as prescribed. Limit being around people who have flu symptoms, even close family members. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. The Minister for Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs speaks to plans for the operationalization of the commercial sector. Anisia Antoine tells us more. The government of St. Lucia is currently working with the public and private sectors for a phased reopening of the economy. As St. Lucia prepares for the drought season, hardware stores have been reopened in an effort to facilitate household emergencies and increase water storage capacity. 
a committee has been appointed to work with the sectors as well as the public health departments to put protocols in place for the full operationalization of commercial activity. Minister for Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Bradley Felix, explained that all hardware and home supply stores have to submit an application to the Ministry of Commerce to be vetted before reopening. But we continue to send out the message to the hardware store owners that there is a certain protocol that must be followed, um, whether it's external customers or your internal customers. So that um, is in place now. With regards to the, the convenience stores, the home supplies, um, owners, they do have to apply. Mm -hmm. uh, we recognize that um, some of these stores sell a wide range of items mm -hmm. and um, we want to ensure that they restrict the, 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 the activity in the store to what is considered to be essential items, which is your sanitary items, your, your um, uh, cleaning supplies, health and wellness. We would try as much as possible. And we know that a lot of these stores do have um, various floors where different things are located. So if it's possible to completely lock off maybe uh, top floors so people can only address um, the, the essential needs on one floor, we, we ensure that we um, provide that sort of guidance to them. The Minister for Commerce noted that his ministry has engaged all sector agencies in aiding businesses that have suffered disruptions arising from the COVID-19 pandemic. Businesses have been significantly disrupted. Unfortunately, I believe there are some that will not recover from the, 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 the current situation. There are those, I believe, that will recover and, and bounce back even better and stronger. What this has done is hopefully to create an awareness by all businesses that we need to have various systems, various business continuity plans in place, various guidelines enacted within the framework of their operations to ensure that when another such crisis, and I'm sure there will be others, um, comes up, that they are better prepared to, to deal with that. Honorable Bradley Felix expressed gratitude to the sector agencies, including the St. Lucia Business Association and the St. Lucia Manufacturers Association, for their contributions during this period. For those who donated graciously in terms of food items so that we could have supported the vulnerable, for, the, for those who were able to <coughs> open under you know, um, immediate um, a, a request by, by government to facilitate various um, shopping activity. For those manufacturers also who um, took advantage um, of a, the, what they saw was a, a, a necessary item required by St. Lucians in terms of some of what was produced. We saw nutmeg, we saw St. Lucia distillers, we saw others producing um, health and sanita sanit sanit sanitary items that could have been used in this crisis. The Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs remains guided by the Ministry of Health and will continue to provide updates as it is related to the business community. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. We now join Primus Hutchinson for today's Nouvelle Aquiole. Monsieur Tara Janel, Monsieur Madame, Department, qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement de la la CGIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, Capozato, Nouvelle Aquiole. Visite au Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement de la CGIS a établi un programme de stabilisation sociale pour assister les gens qui devaient affecter par la maladie Corona, ça veut dire qu'ils perdent du travail en cause de la maladie. Plusieurs personnes, particulièrement en travail à l'industrie touristique et le secteur domestique, j'ai perdu le travail et le gouvernement a pris le devant pour aider à corriger la situation de la situation de la pays qui devait affecter. Je vous donne une adresse pour présenter le programme de la Le Premier ministre honorable Alain Chasné dit que le gouvernement a fait une initiative de la très important. Alors, même si le paiement n'est pas replacé, le salaire qui s'est dévisé de la perdu. Et quand il y a quatre mots à sous-sentence situation économique, ça a frappé à sous-lui. 
Première des choses, c'est déclarer que le programme de stabilisation sociale, c'est pour principalement les gens qui perdent le travail complètement et les gens qui sont très sensibles aux menaces économiques en la société. Par exemple, les plus grands citoyens, les pauvres, et les gens qui ont aspiré à trouver sur la liste des pauvres. Première des choses, c'est annoncer que le gouvernement a payé les gens qui perdent le travail à cause de la situation malade de Corona à cette liste. En retard, 500 dollars et 1 500 tous les mois pour les trois mois pour venir. Mais ce pour déjà qu'à payer à ces nationales avant le mois de février l'année ici. On a le premier ministre qui a dit que ça a coûté le gouvernement plus que 16,8 millions de dollars. Ça c'est pour les gens qui ont un autre pour trouver assistance à la corporation à ces nationales pays en Haïti. J'ai estimé que ça a coûté entre 33 millions pour en haut de 80 millions de dollars pour trois mois de paiement ça là dépend à ce monde qui qualifie pour trouver il permet de chasser renforcer et porter cela pour mon pays assurance nationale ça là particulièrement en situation qui existe présentement il note qui pour mon qui partait qu'a fait contribution pour assurance ça là et qu'a reçu un support ça là en bas condition qu'a ni pour accepter condition pour signer pour venir en même assurance nationale à cette liste. Parlant de ça, assurance nationale à cette liste, en bas programme social, la, qui paye, dépend à son salaire, qui yon te ka reçu, c'est 4% à son assurance. Yo. Ça, c'est yon pa ka y plus bas, yon pa ka y plus bas, di 600 dollars, et yon 1600 dollars tous les mois. Ça veut dire, Yon personne qui te ka recevoir un salaire de 3000 dollars et bien plus haut, qui a trouvé 1600 et moun qui te ka recevoir yon salaire en hauteur de 1000 en plus pour 2900 et check, qui a trouvé 600, c'est 4% haut salaire ça là. Yon moun qui te ka recevoir yon 1000 et moins de ça, qui a recevoir 600 dollars par mois. Si l'on est ici, c'est faux yon pour tuer information qu'on a eu, les mots en ici, date ou fait, Dernier compagnon au travail, date au père du travail, date de vacances, ou à ces vacances ou tes bouts, si ou tes assos vacances, pièce l'autre assistance finance qui ou peut être trouvé votre place de travail, avec uh, détails banques côté ou quoi sauver l'argent. Et là, ici, j'ai fait arrangement pour ces membres qui n'ont pas capable pour éclamer en façon de faciliter le computer, la caïne c'était boîte en bureau, en vieux fort, castré, et souffrir pour faire ça possible. Tout paiement salaire, quand il y a un livre de c'est même ça. Chef officier d'éducation, en cette liste, Dr. Fiona Mayer, j'ai fait un appel pour les indicateurs longi la main des charitables pour les étudiants qui ont suivi l'école en cas à présent en résultat des maladies de corona. Selon Dr. Mayer, l'année en pile est située à diverses paroisses qui s'est aidé. Alors, il a conseillé. Pour ne pas dépendre à ce que l'autre monde pour payer l'initiative ça là. Donc, le maire plaide et puis les éducateurs à cette liste pour supporter le programme de leçon pour les étudiants qui ont créé ces jours là et supporter en de façon façons qui ont facilité et fort que le ministère de l'éducation chaque fait pour soulager et corriger la situation du programme d'éducation à cette liste en bas de menace maladie de corona. Si nous pensons à ce tout le monde pour faire yon bagay, parce que nous savons les différents tout partout. Mais nous voulons applaudir, mais nous voulons dire, nous travaillons ensemble. Ça n'est pas seulement l'éducation, nous tous nous avons une responsabilité pour payer nous. Nous avons une responsabilité pour ces moments là nous avons une responsabilité pour travailler là, nous dire nous qu'il fait. Avec nous, ni pour travailler ensemble pour garder la situation là. Avec nous ça, nous, avec toute information nous n'y nous savons, nous qu'il fait plus bien. Mais nous tous nous pouvons faire, um, essayer pour travailler ensemble pour ça faire. Mm -hmm. Troisième thème, l'école pour les étudiants, qui est en à présent, qui a commencé le 20 avril 2020. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie pour vous dire que vous avez la vie. Vous avez présenté l'autre nouvelle à Koyol. À présent, vous avez présenté au Genel. Merci à Pil Primus. As part of the continued strategy to control the spread of COVID-19, the Ministry of Health and Wellness informs the public of the following. Visiting hours at the Owen King EU Hospital on a daily basis are limited 
to a half hour period, 6 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. and 12 p.m. to 12.30 p.m. Absolutely no evening visiting hours are allowed until further notice. Effective Monday, April 20, 2020, all outpatient clinics at the Owen King EU Hospital will reopen. However, as we continue to adhere to the rules of physical distancing, visits will only be conducted by scheduled appointments. A hospital clerk will be contacting you with your new appointment. Please adhere to your new given appointment date and be on time. All elective and day surgeries remain suspended until further notice. Nonetheless, emergency surgeries will continue. Effective Tuesday, April 21, 2020, outpatient clinics at the St. Lucia National Mental Wellness Center will reopen. Patients and family members are kindly asked to adhere to the scheduled appointments. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.